Hello and welcome to another edition of Sustainable Today. I'm Kaylin Lee. And I'm Sherry Stellar. Today we're at Savi's Island. Believe it or not, we're just on the city limits of Portland, Oregon. That's right, Sherry. In fact, this area is unique for a major city. But Portland and the state of Oregon have strong land use laws that protect valuable farmland like this all around the city. So it's appropriate that we're standing here today to host our program about Cascadia and the Pacific Northwest Wonderland. It's places like this that not only provide good local food, but also help connect us to our history and our heritage. As Sean Yanity said in our Native Perspective segment, preserving our heritage gives us a sense of identity and helps us understand the importance of sustainability. Mm -hmm. Coming up, we speak with two individuals who have truly taken this concept to heart. Casey Corcoran and Mel Sweet are part of Cascadia Matters. Their goal is to highlight emerging issues, ideas, and struggles of our bioregion. Tyler Gill met with Casey and Mel in Reed Canyon, another natural oasis in the heart of Portland. I'm out here with Casey and Mel from Cascadia Matters. Um, they're going to tell us a little bit about bioregionalism and what that means. Well, Cascadia Matters is a very grassroots effort at um, basically telling our own stories. We are just uh, a handful of people living in Bend right now and uh, creating a network, hopefully throughout the bioregion, to create our own place-based media. We've been able to create films and we're working on any form of media that's accessible to you know, people on a decent budget. In the future, we'd love to see you know, radio, interview, um, more films, just creating our own media uh, about our place, about our lives, and our, about our responses to that particular place that we're living in. It's, it's about Cascadia, it's about our rivers, it's about the Willamette, it's about the Deschutes, it's about the coast, it's about the rainforest, it's about you know the inner mountain regions and what we're looking at with aridity and the water crisis. These are, these are the things that we face and uh, basically we learn about these things through a, a corporate media and um, it doesn't make any sense why they would be able to tell the stories of our place better than we could. So we're endeavoring to, to do just that and to connect with other people and encourage them to do the same thing. A bioregion is a space that we can see as being defined by itself, from itself. It's, it's a human attempt to look past our projections onto a piece of land like the old colonial map makers did and see what's there, um, what defines itself. A watershed is the perfect example of that. Um, it's very distinct and delineated from other watersheds, um, but we're not really imposing that on it. You know, watersheds really define themselves and they have a lot of interaction with each other. So no watershed is an island. Um, and in, in recognizing that, we can see how ecologically no place on this earth is separate from another place. However, that doesn't erase distinctions. It doesn't erase the unique character and autonomy of all these different places. And if we can see what is there beyond our own projections, we can then have a real relationship with it. Looking at the laws of the place itself and recognizing that humans have, we have our own laws, but that a place itself has its own laws and there are ways to live in that place in a sustainable fashion and to not abuse it and, and leave it decimated when we're done. And so our first important step is to learn about the stories of the place and learn about the original inhabitants of place and that means human and non-human. 
and learning about the stories and processes that have happened to them and learning about what types of institutions could emerge in place that would teach people how to live there again and to not invisibilize those populations that are oppressed and on the corners and to find ways to to become allies in solidarity towards moving forward in a rest, in a restorative and healing fashion and just recognize that everybody's story is valid and that that is not something that we have done very effectively. So there are very specific things that we want to do with it, with a bioregional movement that are you know radical. People people try to say it's just the bioregionalism is just relating to the land and relating with your friends and sitting in a circle and telling stories, but the implications are, are as deeply radical as it gets. And, you know, we don't want to hide from those. We're, we choose those for a reason. So the real conversations have to be brought to the table. Um, and that's something that I think for sustainability, it's, it's time to start asking the harder questions and get past greenwashing and just buying a hybrid or using compact fluorescent bul bulbs or recycling like these. We need to rebuild all the institutions of how we get the goods of our lives and the services and, and try to get those as locally as possible. And this is far beyond just shopping at the farmer's market.